Welcome back to All Things PSW with Winnie. Thank you so much for all your suggestions. Today is going to be a little bit of a different video. This video is for everyone who has sent me a message and said, Winnie, I am already a PSW. I need help with interview skills. I haven't quite landed the job that I want. So this is what we're going to do today. So Another thing that I will say about this is that I do want to create more of these sessions, but I do want to make them live sessions, guys, just so you can give me any input and we can discuss it in a live forum where I can answer the questions in real time. So as soon as we get to 1000 subscribers, we will definitely start our live sessions. So be sure to like, subscribe and share this with your colleagues. So today the focus is on interview skills. I will answer two questions for now. And once the live sessions start, I will answer as many questions as you want. Just a bit of background on me. I have been a manager for over six years. So I have interviewed hundreds of PSWs. So I will hopefully be able to tell you where you went wrong, how you can improve. But there are certain things about interviews that people don't know. So one thing I will say, for example, is if it's a Zoom interview, you because of course we are in COVID. Make sure you have a clear background. Don't put too many designs in the background. It can be distracting. So as an interviewer, I might not listen to you anymore. I'm just looking to see what your picture is all about. Um, another thing is make sure you dress professionally. Even though it is a Zoom interview, I still am hoping that you have respect for me as your interviewer to come and say, okay, I am dressed. So for men, of course, it's a suit. For ladies, of course, it's something appropriate, not too much cleavage. Um, and another thing that people might not really realize is that your tone of voice is important. Some people come and they act like they're bored and I am wasting their time. So these are the types of things that we can definitely discuss in our live sessions. So be sure to subscribe and I'll definitely give you more information on this. Also, thank you for your emails. Thank you for your suggestions. Thank you for your comments. If there's anything else that you were struggling with, let me know. The final thing that I will discuss is we will also do what we call blackout sessions. This is where I interview some PSWs who are maybe just being transparent about what it is in the profession. As you know, a lot of people are leaving the healthcare profession just based on different reasons. So we wanna make sure that we really discuss all the different things that we face, what it is to be a bedside PSW, what it is to be a PSW in a long-term care setting, what it is to be a PSW in a hospital setting. So all these things we want to discuss openly and transparently. And we hope that this is something that we can do without any issues. So we will be also doing that in this channel. But without further ado, we are going to look at two interview questions that a lot of people get wrong. And these are typically the first questions that an interviewer asks. And if you find your interviewer looking bored or disinterested, it's maybe because you did not focus on these questions properly. So let's get started. The first question that you could get is tell us about yourself. Again, tell us about yourself. So I've seen as a manager that a lot of people start to say, my name is Winnie. I have five kids. I have a husband. I immigrated from such and such. That is not the point of this question. You always need to understand that every interview question has nothing to do with your personal history. In fact, it's very illegal to ask about these questions. You just need to talk about what is relevant to the sector, what is relevant to the organization, what is relevant to healthcare. So please do not talk about your personal business. What you need to talk about is your work experience. I've also had some people come to me and say, Winnie, I've only been in placement. I used to work in a coffee shop before. I have no experience in this. But you did placement. Talk about what happened in placement. Talk about the skills that you learned in placement. Talk about your experience in the coffee shop. So what you need to recognize is that we have transferable skills. Transferable skill is a skill that can be transferred from one sector to another. I'll give an example of Walmart or a coffee shop. Tim Hortons. 
if you're there, you do a lot of customer service and customer service is really, really prominent in the healthcare sector. You know, if someone comes and says mom wasn't fed or mom's uh, brief wasn't changed every two hours, it was changed every three hours. This is where customer care or customer service comes into play. So what you would say is I was recently in placement. I was in a long-term care sector and I was also in a hospital sector. I learned about the importance of timely care. I learned about the importance of collaboration with other disciplines, but this is not something I just learned here. This is something I learned in my previous job when I was working as a customer service agent at blah, blah, blah. These types of things will show that you have actually been in customer service for a long time even though this is a new field to you. Because an employer always wants to know that you have a lot of experience in a sector, but you don't always have to have experience in that specific sector. So always outline what attributes you have, what positive qualities you have, and these things will allow you to get that job. So um, other major qualities that you can also talk about are your certificates. Did you get a certificate in school where you may be a mentor, where you were a peer mentor, where you selected to help your friends or colleagues to navigate through a very difficult module? These are things that you can say. You can say, oh, when we were doing assisting with dying, it was very difficult for a lot of people or my colleagues to navigate through it. I understood the module very well. And then my teacher selected me to help all the students to navigate through the module. That right there shows your leadership quality. So these are the types of things that you can talk about. So if someone says, tell me about myself, I'm not going to talk about my personal life. That has nothing to do with them. What I can say as a new student is, oh, okay, oh, you know, thank you so much for asking this question. I actually had many experiences in the long-term care sector as well as the hospital. And I learned very different skills in these different settings. For example, in long-term care, I understood how important it is for timely care, working with patients with dementia and the approaches that you have to these patients. I really valued the collaboration that we had with all the teams, ensuring that it was family-centered care. And this is what I valued and knew that I had learned this from my experience in the coffee shop or my experience in this particular sector, whatever it is. The hospital sector also brought me something else that I learned. So what I know is that my skills from these settings are transferable. So I am ready to work and learn from you. And I've also looked at your mission, vision, and values, and they align with me and my core. I believe that optimal care is important. When I grew up back home, I had a mother or a grandmother who wasn't cared for. And these are the types of skills that I really, really wish I had. And I feel that me joining your organization will allow me to align with your mission, vision, and values and allow me to align with the things that I thought about when I was younger. So it's not quite about yourself. It's about what you've learned along the way from your childhood, from your educational experience, from your employment experience to get to that final job you are at. A lot of people don't understand that and they get this question very wrong because they make it so short. And I say for most questions that you have, you must at least talk for at least two minutes. In this way, then you really show that you're engaged and that you actually care. If I say to someone, tell me about yourself, well, I'm a good communicator and I love working with people and they stop, I will feel they're not engaged. You didn't tell me anything about what you researched about my organization. You didn't tell me anything about what you really have learned along the way. So tell me about yourself is a question that you can talk for a long time for. And this is where people get it wrong. And it's typically the first question that you are asked. Okay. So the next question, as a new team member, what would you do to build relationships with colleagues? So this question speaks to conflict, but it also speaks to you as a person. You always want to make sure that you can work interdependently and independently. 
what is the difference? Independently is where I just work with myself, but interdependently is where I work with my colleagues. How do you build a relationship? Nobody wants a PSW who goes there and is stuck up and does not get along with people. And this is very reflective of group work. I'm sure you've done a lot of group work in your placement or just in general. So you always want to make sure that you talk about attributes. I will be positive. I will smile. I will make sure that I listen to the people who are already working there. When you start a new position, you have a mentor or preceptor or a colleague. So these are the types of people you have to ask questions to, but you cannot go standoffish like, oh, you changed Mr. Smith this way. This is what I learned in school. Obviously, you might not be a good fit for that environment. A lot of humility goes a long way. So this is a question to do with conflict. How do you deal with that? But also a question to do with how are you going to deal with my staff here? Because if I feel you're not going to deal with my staff here, I'm not going to hire you. So you talk about the positive qualities. I will make sure I lean on my staff or other staff who are in the unit. I'll make sure I look over policies and procedures. And if I have any questions, I'll ask other staff. I'll make sure that I build positive relationships. If there are any questions or concerns, I will make sure I navigate them to my mentor or preceptor. I will also make sure that I learn from my colleagues and always give positive reaffirmation when applicable. And I will also understand that this is a different unit. It's a different environment. And I will understand what it is that I need to learn from my colleagues. Again, you come from a position of humility versus a position of being standoffish and a know-it-all because nobody wants a know-it-all in their organization. So you always want to make sure, especially in healthcare, so you always want to make sure that you come with a lot of humility and this way you will be able to land that job. So these are just two questions, guys. I have hundreds of questions. As I said, I have managed and conducted hundreds of interviews. So if this is something you're interested in, let me know. So if we reach a thousand subscribers, you can throw questions at me. Let me know, you know what, I went for this interview. I was sure I was going to get it. I didn't get it. And I'll give you some feedback. Um, another thing that you also need to know is that there are different environments as a PSW. Some environments are unionized and some are non-unionized. There are different questions for you being a union employee because you're working, of course, with the union and that's different. And there are other um, organizations that are non-unionized. I have worked with both. So I'm hoping I can really, really help you with that. So if you're interested in this, please be sure to subscribe, like, share with your colleagues, and we will do this. And we will have more questions coming your way. But let me know what you think about this video. If you think it's not really helpful, let me know. But I do feel that a lot of people are not landing the jobs of their dreams. And Honestly, interviewing is one of the most difficult things. So I'm hoping that we can discuss this together and grow together and make sure that we have excellent PSWs in Ontario. So I am going to go now, but if you have any questions, please just send any comments in the comments below. And thank you so much for your time.